Good morning, church. I'm Pastor Marty Johnston, pastor of Algonquin and Central United Methodist Churches, and I greet you on this, the day that the Lord has made. It is uh, just one of those beautiful days, and it is much easier to say, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It's a little tougher once the summer months are over, but how easy it is uh, to say today. We greet you, or I greet you in the name of our Lord, and it is good for us to be together to worship on this day. Also, uh, it is Father's Day, and in our prayers uh, this later in our service, we will be offering a prayer uh, for fathers and uh, for their children. Give special greetings to those of you who are watching online. If you would like to share a prayer request with us and are comfortable typing that into the comments, please do so. And then those prayer requests will get sent to me by text and I will share them uh, with the congregation. For those of us uh, that are here, if you have a prayer request that you would like to share, be sure to write that uh, on the card uh, that you can find in the pew and just place that in the offering and they'll be sure uh, to get that to me. Likewise, uh, we do have the registers, the little black books in each of the pews and if you have opportunity, do sign that and uh, let us know of your attendance uh, this day. We do like to begin our worship statement by reminding ourselves, our worship time, uh, by sharing in our mission statement. That is written on the front of your bulletin, and I invite you to join me in saying that. Connecting all people to God by building bridges of caring, outreach, and acceptance. Our call to worship comes to us from Psalm 116, and I invite, invite you to stand uh, as we give our call to worship. I love the Lord who has heard my voice and my supplications and has inclined his ear to me whenever I called. What shall I return to the Lord for all my benefits? I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. And now if you remain standing and turn to 100, page 100 in your hymnals, God whose love is reigning over us.
Shall we pray? Loving God, you remind us that the kingdom of heaven has come near. Open our eyes, our faith, and our hearts that we may perceive and celebrate your presence. Give us eyes as Abraham and Sarah before us to see you on our doorsteps as you promise us unimaginable joy. Give us hearts empowered by your Son, Jesus Christ, to show your compassion to the harassed and the helpless. This we ask in the name of Jesus, who reconciles us to you and sends us forth to be your reconciliation to the world. This we pray in Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen and amen. Please be seated. And I invite our young people to come forward and I'll do my best to speak really loudly because my portable mic is somewhere out there and I didn't, I didn't bring it in with me. Norm and uh, Tom, you did so well. I think I dropped a $100 bill somewhere <laughs> over there, if you'd check that out, yeah. So good morning again. It is so good to see you, and thank you for sitting down. Aren't these nice people that we see all smiling out here? Yeah. So I just want to tell, uh, talk for a minute or two about keeping promises. Do you know what a promise is? What? Yeah. What, how would you say a, a, what a promise is? Okay. Okay, I think I just got a confession, and I'm not going to share that. <laughs> but thank you. So if somebody says, I promise to do something, that probably, that means that they're going to, they said that they're going to do it. Does that sound right? I promise to do this. Or I promise to never do that. that that's a promise that means we won't do something. Sometimes people don't keep their promises. Now there may be a lot of reasons for that. But the one thing that I'd like to share is that God does keep God's promises. And in that, we can take a a great deal of comfort and feel happy about. So when Jesus says, I am with you always, we can be happy about that and we can take comfort because that's a promise that he has made to be with us even all of our days. And that's why we read the Bible, is to learn about some of the promises of God. So the promise today that I want you to remember is that 
Jesus is always with you and that Jesus will always be with you because God keeps his promises. Will you pray with me? And I invite the congregation to pray as well. Dear Lord, thank you for loving me. Thank you for keeping your promises. Help me to remember them always. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Good job. Our first reading this morning comes from the book, uh, the first book of the Bible, Genesis. In today's passage, we read of God's announcement to Abraham and Sarah that they shall have a son in their old age. Spend some time this week pondering the words, is anything too wonderful for the Lord? Genesis chapter 18, verses 1 through 15, chapter 21, verses 1 through 7. The Lord appeared to Abraham near the great trees of Mamre while he was sitting at the entrance to his tent in the heat of the day. Abraham looked up and saw three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he hurried from the entrance of his tent to meet them and bowed low to the ground. He said, If I have found favor in your eyes, my Lord, do not pass your servant by. Let a little water be brought, and then you may all wash your feet and rest under this tree. Let me get you something to eat so you can be refreshed and then go on your way. Now that you have come to your servant, very well, they answered, do as you say. So Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah. Quick, he said, get three sias of the finest flour and knead it and bake some bread. Then he ran to the herd and selected a choice tender calf and gave it to the servant who hurried to prepare it. He then brought some curds and milk and the calf that had been prepared and set these before them. While they ate, he stood near them under a tree. Where is your wife, Sarah? They asked him. There in the tent, he said. Then one of them said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Now Sarah was listening at the entrance to the tent, which was behind him. Abraham and Sarah were already very old, and Sarah was past the age of childbearing. So Sarah laughed to herself as she thought, After I am worn out and my Lord is old, will I now have this pleasure? Then the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh and say, Will I really have a child now that I am old? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? I will return to you at the appointed time next year, and Sarah will have a son. Sarah was afraid, so she lied and said, I did not laugh, but he said, Yes, you did laugh. Now the Lord was gracious to Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah what he had promised. Sarah became pregnant and bore a son to Abraham in his old age at the very time God had promised him. Abraham gave the name Isaac to the son Sarah bore him. And when his son Isaac was eight days old, Abraham circumcised him as God commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Sarah said, God has brought me laughter, and everyone who hears about this will laugh with me. 
And she added, who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? Yet I have borne him a son in his old age. That ends the scripture for this morning. Now we will be joining in a chorus, Open Our Eyes, that's in your supplemental hymnal, page 2086. I appreciate your singing of that chorus uh, this morning. Just a little background. We miss our choir, but we understand. Need some time off with the summer. But it is rather lonely up here, I will tell you, <laughs> on this side. And in thinking about a what would be an appropriate song before reading the gospel, that's where that chorus came from, of open our eyes and open our ears because we want to hear the words of Jesus. And I can't think of a better chorus before we read uh, the gospel. And so when we don't have special music or we don't have a choir, uh, we will be continuing to sing that chorus and you sounded so lovely today, so thank you. Our gospel reading does come to us from the Gospel of Matthew, the ninth chapter, verses 35, into the tenth chapter, verse 8. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Jesus called his twelve disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out impure spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or enter any town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, Drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks. Be 
I'll let you in on a little secret. Pastors talk amongst themselves. And we get together and we talk about our congregations and our church and the things that we face. And so the t story is told that at one point in Sault Ste. Marie, two churches simultaneously became overrun with bats. Yes, you could say they had bats in their belfry. All kinds of bats. And as these two pastors met for a cup of coffee, bats became the topic of discussion of how on earth are we going to get rid of these bats? And there was much discussion. And then when they left, they said, let's meet again in a few weeks and compare notes. And so when they did meet, one pastor asked the other, tell me of your progress. And he went on to explain how he went to great lengths to find a way to trap them without bringing any harm and to find a way to release them while simultaneously trying to conduct some repairs so that the bats couldn't get back in. And while much uh, there was some success, there were still bats getting in, now just a fewer number, and so the problem still remained. After speaking, he said, so tell me of your progress. And the second pastor picked up his coffee leaned back, took a sip, and with a smile said, we have no bats. It's as clean as a whistle in our, in our belfry. Well, what did you do? Simple. We made them all members of our church. And we haven't seen them since. Remember one of my old sayings, if you can't say amen, say, oh my, yes. And so we come to a passage where Jesus is really talking about being engaged in the work of the kingdom. He first says to pray for people to come into the fields, so to speak. And then the text goes on by showing that he sends the disciples out. It's as if God has posted a help wanted sign. Now I do want to very early say that before I get into the sermon very much, that I recognize that there's a great deal that goes on here and that people serve within this congregation in a wide variety of ways. And I say thank you for that. And I hope that this sermon proves to be an encouragement to those who are engaged. And to those who may find themselves going, well, gee, maybe I'm not in as involved in service as I could be. May it be something that provides encouragement to seek out a way and a place to serve our Lord. In, as part of our baptismal service and our membership vows, I have the opportunity to speak to the congregation some of my most favorite words in all of our liturgy. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I present these people to you. Do all in your power to increase their faith confirm their hope, perfect them in love. So we're going to do just a brief exercise this, moment, this morning. Take a peek at those around you, whether it be to the left or the right, to the front, 
or to the back. Take them all in and consider them. And hear again these words, Beloved of God, I commend these people to you. And do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, perfect them in love. That's quite a ministry, isn't it? And it is an opportunity that we have to play a part in the spiritual upbringing of each and every person that we come in contact with. I realize that there are some who don't like to do anything at all. As a matter of fact, I came across this quote. Some of us are like wheelbarrows, only useful when pushed and easily upset. But I don't think that speaks for the vast, vast majority of this audience today. I've had almost a year with you now and I see your willingness to serve, your willingness to be faithful, your desire to hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant. And I thank you for that service. And I encourage you to not grow weary in well-doing, for our Lord will richly bless you for your service. Some of us may be asking, well, what kind of service should I be involved in? And here, I just like to say, give it a try. You never know. Robert Fulgham, author of All I Ever Needed to Know, I Learned in Kindergarten found himself speaking not only to kindergartners, but to college students. And he said there was an interesting thing with kindergartners. How many of you can sing? They all raised their hands. Would jump into a huge chorus if he let them in one. How many of you can draw? They would grab a piece of paper and crayon and draw anything he asked them to. But by the time he got to the college group, how many of you could sing, there was an awkward silence and a hope that maybe there was a music major in the audience or a member of the college choir. When he asked how many of you can draw, people looked around and ask themselves, is there an art major in our midst? And Fulcom asked this question, where did they lose the enthusiasm and the willingness that they had in kindergarten to the point where they are now? There probably isn't any single definitive answer but I dare say that one possibility is that criticism was received along the way. And that because of that criticism, people gave up. When we think of criticism in the light of the vows that we have in our membership and baptismal liturgy. How is it in our power to increase faith, to confirm their hope and perfect them in love if we treat each other with a bitter or critical or harmful spirit or divisive? 
I don't want to put Kathy on the spot, but I will just say there's probably a very high chance that she would never turn anyone away for our choir. <laughs> that there might even be the hopes for someone like me that can't carry a tune in a bucket. They'll find a place. Might be in the very back, furthest away from a microphone, but they'll find a place. We serve with a joyful heart. And may, perhaps we would do well to remind ourselves that of the scripture, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. As long as you're joyful and you're making noise, you're being scriptural. We may doubt our gifts and our abilities. And rather than look at the size of our shortcomings, I would encourage us all to look at the size of our God who created all of this out of nothing, whose face moved upon the waters of chaos and brought forth such splendor. What can this God do with you? What can this God do with me? Here's an interesting story that came out of Ukraine in 2004 of during an election runoff of when the challenger was highly favored in the polls was reported on the state government run broadcast to be losing terribly and that it was going to be the re-election of the incumbent by an overwhelming majority. What no one took into account was that as part of that broadcast, they had someone who could do sign language for the deaf mute community. And that person had access to the real results that had come in. And the real results were that the challenger was winning and that the incumbent was in the process of stealing the election right in front of the people. And so this lone deaf mute signed these words, listen, this election is being taken from you. Arise and act now. It sowed the seeds of what is now known as the Orange Revolution, and it was spearheaded by people who couldn't hear or couldn't speak, but still could hold people accountable. And it led to another election being held in that country, an honest election. Don't focus on your shortcomings. I say this to you and I say this to me. Focus on the goodness of God and the power of God and the promise of God who has said that even a cup of cold water given in Jesus' name will not go unrewarded. When we leave here this day, I hope that we leave with, first of all, a great spirit of appreciation. It takes a lot to make a church service happen. From those that practice music and practice their readings to those who run the bulletins to those who get our treats ready are all important treats that we look so forward to. <laughs> to those who clean, to those who sing, to those 
who greet. Let's be thankful. Let us be encouraging. And let us remember that God has called and given us opportunity to serve. I think of Benji, my free dog, who cost me more than you can ever possibly know. Because Benji had separation anxiety. And if we left Benji alone in the house, he tore it apart, literally trim off the wall. If you walked outside to get the mail and the window was open, he'd jump through the screen. He wanted to be with his master. But the other thing about Benji is Benji wanted to be a part of whatever was going on. And every year, there's that time when you've got to do the trimming of tree branches so that you don't get knocked out of the saddle when you mow the lawn on the tractor. And so I'd have all kinds of brush that I would need to carry to the fire pit. And that silly dog would run up beside me and grab a whole bunch of those branches in his mouth that I was dragging so he could help. God bless, Benji. God bless you. God bless us. As we seek to partner with the Holy Spirit in faithful service, knowing that we all will stand before the judgment seat of Christ to hear those words, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. When we leave here today, let us leave with the conviction that St. Francis gave when he said, go into the world, preach the good news, and if necessary, use words. Help is wanted. Help is wanted to increase people's faith, to confirm their hope, to perfect them in love. May we be faithful in our love and in our service to our Lord as we seek to serve. Amen. We have freely received from God without payment. Let us give generously out of God's bounty, living and serving as signs of God's kingdom that is come. I invite our ushers to come forward to receive this morning's offering.
would you join me in the prayer of dedication? Loving God, your generosity and loving compassion knows no limits. Trusting in your love, we offer to you ourselves and these gifts. We pray for your blessing and pray that we might be a blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Our online viewers uh, have shared the following request. Uh, Sharon Jones is home uh, from the hospital and is recuperating, and so prayers for continued healing and recuperation. Lynn LeCure uh, has asked for prayers uh, for a rather quick trip that they're going to have to make to Petoskey for uh, an urgent medical matter. Uh, pr prayers not only for traveling mercies, but also uh, for that this treatment uh, proves to be helpful and to bring healing. Jim Bankson shares with us, thank you congregation for my acceptance and caring. I am glad to join you all. Uh, God loves me and you. So thank you for sharing that, uh, Jim. We also give thanks in that we're just have a, a bit of a break. Uh, we've had company for 10, 12 nights, I don't know. I, thankfully, we haven't reached the point where I'm counting yet, so it, it, it went well. And we had a, a wonderful time. And curiously, people seem far more interested to visit us in Sault Ste. Marie than they did in Weberville. I, I, I think there is some UP charm going, uh, going on here. For what a blessing it is to be able to catch up uh, with friends and with family uh, during that time. I will be leading us in petition prayers of petition that will end with the phrase, God in your mercy, and you are invited to respond with, hear our prayer. Trusting in God's abundant mercy let us offer our prayers for a world in need. O oh Lord, for the church here and around the world, we pray. Seek out disciples and send them out with authority to proclaim good news and to bring healing where there is pain and to counter the forces of evil. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For the earth and all its creatures, we pray, equip farmers, farm workers, and all who labor on the land to produce a harvest. Nourish crops with ample rainfall and abundant sunshine. Restore lands ruined by misuse or pollution. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who govern, we pray, empower those who seek peaceful resolutions to conflict, and embolden those who advocate for all who are oppressed. Work through systems of government to establish your righteousness and peace throughout this world. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For those who suffer, we pray. Accompany those who feel helpless, alone, or abandoned. Embrace any who long for successful treatment for mental illness or freedom from addiction. Heal those who are sick. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For fathers and father figures, we pray. Console all who long to be fathers, children estranged from their fathers, anyone grieving the death of a father and fathers who have lost a child. Draw near to all for whom this day stirs up difficult emotions. God, in your mercy, 
hear our prayers. Receive our prayers, spoken and unspoken, and answer us, O God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, sharing together in the prayer that he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Some announcements. Uh, Vacation Bible School is almost here. Uh, that will begin Monday, June 26th. And there still are uh, some opportunities to sign up uh, to volunteer. Tomorrow, uh, Abby will be out of town, and so our office will be closed tomorrow. She will be back in the office, or, or the office will be open uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday during its normal hours of 9 to 2. On Wednesday, we have a Bible study, and you are invited uh, to come and to join that. Uh, meets in the library at 1030. Are there any other announcements that should be highlighted? I invite you to stand for this morning's closing hymn. Oh, I do want to say, as you stand, these lovely carnations that are behind me, uh, they will be handed out uh, to every gentleman here. And so make sure, fellas, that you get your carnation. So I invite you to stand uh, for hymn number 664, Sent Forth by God's Blessing. Thank you. 